Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to look at displaying two categorical variables. When we want to display two categorical variables in a table, the table is often called a contingency table. So in the previous example that we looked at, we were looking at just one categorical variable and that was eye color. It happens that eye color or the categories that we broke eye color up into included multiple categories. There were blue, there were green eyes, brown eyes, other eyes. But all of those data values, the categories, were one variable, the one variable being eye color. But in this situation or in other situations, we want to keep track of two categorical variables at once. For example, whether or not someone likes espresso and whether or not someone likes chocolate. So for each person, we're collecting two bits of data. So our data would look something like the following data. And we're going to say go around and ask everyone in the class if they like espresso, yes or no, and chocolate, yes or no. So you might say yes, espresso, no chocolate. So each person is going to have a yes or a no for espresso and chocolate. So in this way, each person, we're collecting two bits of information on them, two variables. So going back to our situation here, contingency tables, again, are what we call tables when we're keeping track of two categorical variables. Another word for such tables are two-way tables. And that's because there are two ways in which we are representing a variable. So we're representing variable of chocolate likes, using these two columns, likes, don't likes, and we're keeping track of espresso likes using these two rows, likes, don't likes. So there are two ways in which we're keeping track of this data or of these variables. All right, so using the data from a statistics class, this is hypothetical data, that was collected on whether students like chocolate and whether they like espresso. So a few things to note here in what we're seeing in this table. So as I pointed out, these two columns show the likes of chocolate. These two rows show the likes or dislikes of espresso. So here, what we're looking at, say this one, represents one person doesn't like both espresso and doesn't like chocolate. The number that we're seeing here, four, means that we have four people that don't like chocolate, but do like espresso. This 11 shows that we have 11 people that like chocolate and don't like espresso. This seven shows that we have seven people who like chocolate and don't like espresso. So that's the first bit of data. But then we see that along the last column and last row, we have totals. So often we might wanna put a line in our data just to represent these different parts here or a line in our table. So we see that the totals on the right hand column show us the total number of people in this like espresso category or not like espresso. And then in this lower row, we have the number of people who like chocolate and who don't like chocolate. So this final total, 23, is the total number of people in our study. And you'll notice that 23 is equal to the sum of 15 plus eight. So the number of people who like espresso or don't like espresso equals our total. And similarly for the chocolate. So 18 people like chocolate, five don't like chocolate. If we add those up, we get our 23. All right, so that is a little bit more about what we wanna say about this two-way table. And lastly, I'll say that these numbers here, these totals are often called the margins of our table. And we'll see that pop up here in the next uh, example. So we're first gonna look at marginal probabilities or margins or totals. So for part A, we wanna know what proportion of the students like chocolate. So to break this down a bit, we wanna know what proportion of all students like chocolate. So we wanna know what part of all of the students like chocolate. So to set up such a proportion, we wanna identify, well, what's the total 
or the largest, the larger group that we're asking of this proportion. So in our case, proportion of the students. So our total here would be the total students. We wanna know what part of them like chocolate. So of all of the students, of all of these 23 students, how many like chocolate? 18. So the proportion that we compute is 18 over 23. As a decimal would be 0.7826. As a percentage, that would become 78.26%. And so how would we write a sentence or describe this number in a sentence? Well, we'd say 78.26% of the students like chocolate. Excellent work. Part B says, what proportion of the students do not like espresso? So we want a proportion of the students. So all of the students are our total. And what part of this total do we want to compute? We want to compute those who, or count those who do not like espresso. So I want you to try to find what or how many students in our class do not like espresso. Awesome, and you'll go to this row, does not like espresso to find that total number. So our proportion will be eight out of the 23, which is 0 0.3478 or 34.78% of the students do not like espresso. So as a sentence, we'd write out that entire sentence. 34.78% of the students Do not like espresso. Awesome, great work. All right, so these, what we just computed, these probabilities are called marginal probabilities because we use the number in the margins. Recall that margin of our table are these final rows or this final column. And then they use the total and one single variable or one single variable. In our case, we saw example in part A, that single variable that we were looking at was the chocolate preference. The single variable for part B was the espresso preference. And now we also compute something called joint probabilities or two-way tables. I'm gonna highlight here just to keep these categories separate. So we have marginal probabilities, we have joint probabilities. So such probabilities we'll see investigates the proportion of our cases or the people in our study that satisfy two different specific conditions. So for part C, it says what proportion of the class likes espresso and chocolate. So again, our whole, we're looking at a proportion of the whole class. So our whole group is gonna be that 23 total people. A proportion of the whole class like espresso and chocolate. So we can look at our two-way table and find how many, what's the total number of people that are in both of those categories. So we see here in the likes chocolate that we have the likes chocolate group separated into likes espresso and don't like espresso. We want to compute those who like chocolate and like espresso. So for us, that number would be here in our category for likes chocolate and likes espresso. So in our case, that will be 11 people. So we'd have 11, recall this means they both, they like both espresso and chocolate. We'd have 11 out of 23, 
which is 0.4783. So we could say in a sentence, 47.83% of the students like both chocolate and espresso. Part D says, what proportion of the class does not like espresso and does not like chocolate. So again, we wanna count those number, find the proportion of those people who don't like both chocolate and espresso. So we can find don't like chocolate category. Well, some of those people like espresso, some do not. So those that do not is this one person. So for us, we'd have one person that doesn't like both chocolate and espresso. Again, we have 23 people in our class. So the proportion we wanna compute is one out of the 23, which is 0 0.0435. So we would say 4.35% of the class doesn't like espresso. nor chocolate. And now these probabilities we computed are called joint probabilities because they are the intersection between two variables, meaning the intersection. So if we say had those people who like chocolate, those people who like espresso, we want to count those who are in both categories. They're also often called and probabilities because we want one thing and another thing to happen. And now the last type of probability that we're gonna look at are conditional probabilities. So for example, part E says, what proportion of the students that like chocolate also like espresso? So one thing I wanna note here is after we're asked for what proportion, we're asked of the students that like chocolate. So in the previous questions, we've been asked what proportion of the class, dot, dot, dot. In this case, we want what proportion of the class or of the students that like chocolate. So now the whole that we're considering what proportion of is coming from the whole of the students that like chocolate. So we need to find how many total students like chocolate. Well, we can look at our two-way table. Those that like chocolate are in this column. And we see we have 18 people who like chocolate. So there's 18 people in this category of like chocolate. How many of them also like espresso? So we're just focusing now again on this column. So in this like chocolate group, how many like espresso? 11. So like espresso, there'll be 11. So those that like both chocolate and espresso are the 11. And those that are in our condition of liking chocolate are down here in our 18. So our proportion would be 0 0.6111. So as a percentage in a sentence, we'd say 61.11% of the class of the students who like chocolate. Also like espresso. So the reason why this is often called a condition or this is called a given is because we wanna know, well, if something is happening, then what percentage of that group is our interest. And so this students that like chocolate, that's often called the condition. So given we're just looking at the students who like chocolate, what proportion of them also like espresso? Awesome, great work. So we're gonna get more practice on computing such probabilities in the next videos and in the uh, 
homework and practice for this class.